Okay, we'll go through a stability proof of the LQR. But before we get to that, we need to go through stability in the sense of Lyapunov and Lyapunov's direct method of stability. So we'll start with the definition of an equilibrium of an autonomous system. So we've talked about this a little bit, but uh, the equilibrium is basically the state x that makes the right-hand side equal to zero. So x dot equals zero, hence x does not change, therefore it's an equilibrium. Now, if the equilibrium is not at the origin, you can always translate it to the origin, even if the system is nonlinear. And you can do this with a simple transformation like that, uh, where now you're in terms of your new variable, your equilibrium is at the origin. And then going forward with this discussion, we're going to assume that our equilibrium is always at the origin, um, having leveraged the uh, translation property if needed. Okay, so now that we've got equilibrium defined, let's talk about what we mean by stability. So a few different stability definitions. Uh, the first one, stability in the sense of Lyapunov. So let f dot equal f of x, then the system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov. If about the equilibrium, giving any epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta that could depend on epsilon such that if you start, if you initialize within delta, then the states evolve within epsilon for all time beyond the initial time. So that's this definition of stability. Now if we want to say the system is asymptotically stable, uh, and when we say that, we mean asymptotically stable about the equilibrium. Then what we need to look at is the initial condition being within some region of the equilibrium. And if you're in that region, then the states evolve uh, or approach the equilibrium approach the origin as time increases. So, so long as you start within a neighborhood of the, of the equilibrium point or the origin, the states go to the origin as time increases. That's asymptotic stability. And then the asymptotic stability property is global um, if it doesn't matter where your initial condition is, basically. So you, if, if x is, uh, is an n-dimensional vector of real numbers, then no matter where you are in Rn, if you initialize, uh, you will approach the uh, equilibrium point asymptotically. So that's stability. Now let's talk about Lyapunov's direct method of stability. Uh, there's also an indirect method that looks at eigenvalues. This is uh, the one that depends on the thing called a Lyapunov function. So we're going to let v of x be a continuous mapping. It maps Rn into R. And we're going to let v be positive definite. So what does that mean? Well, it just means that if you're at the origin, then v is 0. Otherwise, v is greater than 0. And we're going to make this positive definite property local. So we're going we're to bound the positive definite property between the origin and, um, and some real number r uh, based on the norm of x.
So the function v becomes a Lyapunov function if not only is it locally positive, definite, and differentiable, but the time derivative of the function v along the trajectories of the system is negative semi-definite within some region of the origin or of the equilibrium point. The evaluation along the trajectories comes from that substitution of f of x for dx dt, by the way. All right, so now that we have the definition of what a Lyapunov function is, let's talk about the Lyapunov theorem for local stability. So if we have a Lyapunov function, v of x, for the uh, system x dot is f of x, So if you can find that Lyapunov function, then what you can say is that the equilibrium is locally stable. So the trick is to find the Lyapunov function. That's all the work in, in this approach to stability proof. Um, if V dot is negative definite, not negative semi-definite, but negative definite around some neighborhood of the origin or the equilibrium, then we can say that the system x dot f of x is locally asymptotically stable. Now if we want to expand the asymptotic stability property uh, and make it a global property, then what that requires is a couple things. First, that your Lyapunov function v is radially unbounded. And it has to be um, positive definite everywhere as well. And also that uh, v dot is negative definite everywhere. And then you can say, so basically if, if you have vx positive definite and v dot negative definite everywhere, then you're globally asymptotically stable. Okay, so now we're equipped with some tools and you may have to go back uh, over those carefully, uh, especially if you haven't seen them before to really understand them. Um, that would be a subject of a, a whole other class, but uh, hopefully that's enough to get you started on that. Um, now, we're going to use that method to prove asymptotic stability of the closed-loop LQR system. So if we have the infinite horizon LQR problem, where the terminal matrix M is zero, the control penalty matrix R is positive definite, the state penalty matrix Q is positive semi-definite, the pair AD is observable, the pair AB is controllable, if we have those conditions met, then when we solve the algebraic Riccati equation, we get a solution P that's positive definite. And it's a unique solution. And when we use that unique positive definite solution P in the gain equation, R inverse B transpose P, then the closed loop system, X dot A minus B K X, is asymptotically stable. And it's actually globally asymptotically stable. So let's let's show that that's true. We're going to apply Lyapunov's direct method that we just went over. And we're going to let the Lyapunov candidate function be a quadratic, x transpose px, where we're going to let p uh, be the solution to the algebraic Riccati equation. 
So we're going to assume we had all those conditions met. We have a positive definite P. And then we're going to take the time derivative along the trajectories of the closed loop system. So 2x transpose P is dV dx, and then you substitute in f of x, that's ACLx. So uh, using the fact that that's just a scalar, um, you can break it up into two terms as so. And well now what we have to do is show that the sum of those two terms is negative definite. And it has to be negative, that has to hold everywhere. So to show this, let's go to the Riccati equation. So there's our Riccati equation, algebraic Riccati equation. And we can note that that term is the gain k. And what we need to do is get those ACLs to appear in the Riccati. So um, you see you have an A in the first term of the ARE. Why don't we just subtract P, B, K from it, and then you have the closed loop. And you can do that for the second term in the ARE. And then you have PBK plus Q. And then on the right-hand side, you just have to add those same terms back in um, so that the ARE is still the ARE. And now we can write this in terms of the closed loop matrix, ACL. And uh, we can cancel that quadratic term, leaving just Q. And then on the right-hand side, we just have minus K transpose B transpose P. So now what we can show is that that term that we had in our Lyapunov uh, v dot expression is minus k transpose b transpose p minus q. But you can just add identity in there in the form of r, r inverse. And so you have k transpose rk minus q or minus k transpose rk minus q. And so now we have to, so now we have an, an alternative expression for what we had earlier. So this is what we had earlier. And I just switched the order of those two terms, but it's uh, it's not uh, it's not important. And there's the term that we deduced from the Riccati equation. And so we have to show that that is positive definite. And if it's positive definite, then v dot is negative definite, and it holds everywhere, and we're done. Uh, but the first term is positive definite. The second term in that is positive semi-definite. So is a positive definite matrix plus a positive semi-definite matrix positive definite? Well, if you multiply by x uh, on both sides, you get a scalar. Uh, and that's the first one is greater than 0. The second one is greater than equal to 0. So their sum has to be positive definite. Therefore, the matrix, the matrices, the sum of those matrices is positive definite. And we've shown that v dot is therefore negative definite, which holds for all of Rn if x is in Rn. Hence, the closed loop LQR system is globally asymptotically stable. And that's what we set out to prove.